but her reign was short and after being pensioned off in 1974, very quickly became a shadow of her former self. She was left to see out her days as a museum piece. She was a steam train 3801. But that's not the end of her story. After an inactive 12 years, she's back and with a full head of steam. The 3801 has been resurrected thanks to a small band of enthusiasts and headed by Professor John Glastonbury. They formed a company and a quarter of a million dollars later, not to mention the thousands of man hours, the Queen of Steam, the 3801, was back on the rails. Emily Booker reports. A, a living, moving, uh, like almost human, and they they can practically talk to you. They can talk loud when you belt them along, or else they can just go nice and quiet. And uh, you know, you go back to the old school days when you uh, the teacher told you about the train going along. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. When they get up to the top of the hill, I thought I could. I thought I could. I thought I could. <laughs> years in pieces, the 3801 was finally breathing again. Water was whistling through its pipes, coal was glowing in its furnace, and the engineers were checking every little detail. It had come a long way from the days when it sat lifeless in the Thurmill Rail Museum. I thought it was mission impossible. I thought we'd bitten off far too much, and I thought, frankly, it was madness. And that's what makes it even more exciting that we did manage to finish it. More than 300 apprentices worked on the loco. Because of the crisis in the Newcastle manufacturing industry, many of these apprentices would otherwise have been out of work. Tony, can you see a few of the bits that you've worked on here? Uh, yeah, there's uh, this panel here. That section is there. And the side panels up behind here. And same panel on the other side over there. How does it feel seeing bits of your handiwork in this steam engine? Well, um, to look at them now, you can see where they went, but before they, they were just a piece you know, that they had to be made. It's terrific to see where they actually went. <laughs> to see it born in 1943 when steam was at its prime, and then to come back and to see it born again, to go out and be one of the greatest tourist attractions in the world, that's what it'll be. 1,500 people turned up for the recommissioning ceremony in Newcastle on Saturday. Jeez, George, you're doing it like a 20-year-old. 98-year-old former driver, George Webber, was there to open the regulator. How did you feel getting back up on the old steam engine? Oh, it don't take long. You only got the feeling and away you go. It's in you. Does it look as good as it did before to you? Oh, I've never cleaned up like that before. No, never. <laughs> never had time to clean it. We're always on the track. David Hill shoveled the first official load of coal with a few tips from driver Clem Poetska. Round the corner. The trouble is, you I'm doing it wrong. How many years you done? 43. What are you going to do when you retire? I have to go to Fiji. Yeah, oh, that'll be good. <laughs> While the modern diesel engines might be cleaner and quieter than the steam engines, there are some things you just can't do on an XPT. In the good old days, you'd sit in the siding and you'd be on a freight train. And you'd be there for the, the males and the passengers to go past you, so you'd have a feed. This was very good on a cold winter's morning. Hey, right, another one. Empty shell in the firebox. 
And there you are. Now, how do you like your eggs? Sunny side up or not? While the breakfasts were good, the steam engines also had their drawbacks. In the summertime, they're pretty hot, so you get up to it, you know, hot day, well, you can imagine hot day outside, what would be like inside. And after you did a double to Sydney, and uh, you travel about two tonne of coal to start off with, another four tonne going down, another four, four and a half tonne coming home, so you'd be up to shoveling 11 and 12 tonne a shift, and they used to call these 30 eight class the wife stars it. Because when you got home, all you wanted to do was go to bed by yourself. But no one was complaining about the shining green engine on Saturday as they celebrated its return to the tracks. This is the first of the giant 38-class loco that were introduced in the Second World War. These were the big troop carriers on the east coast of Australia. It's the only locomotive that uh, has been all around Australia and will do so again. And it can do 100 miles an hour, the old fellas say faster than the XPT. Well, all of the old fellas here today are boasting that this thing can beat the XPT. I don't believe them, and now we'll put it to the test. Welcome back to 3801, and some fine footage provided there by uh, Film Australia.